Pleasant good day to all tuning in to Christ Jesus is Lord Ministries. I want to welcome you back to the schoolroom. This is where you are educated, where you are illuminated, where you are enlightened concerning the Word of God. Today we'll be looking at a rather interesting subject and it is entitled The Investigative Judgment, Fact or Fiction. Subtopic is there an investigative judgment now to my listening viewers to those you watching this PowerPoint presentation uh, the subject of the investigative judgment is one that has sparked great contempt by many evangelicals and Christians alike the investigative judgment, the subject of the investigative judgment, the doctrine of the investigative judgment, the teaching of an investigative judgment is one that is taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And for one to really understand, one has to go into prophecy of Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 8, Daniel chapter 9. One has to go into the Old Testament, into the sanctuary service, dealing with the Day of Atonement. One has to go into the book of Revelation and deal with the different um, time prophecies that are there. So this uh, study, I have seen recently that there are many, even Seventh-day Adventists, who scorn the doctrine of the investigative judgment they throw contempt upon it and say that it is heresy it is heretical it is not biblical and one such person is who first came about with it his name is desmond ford he was an australian a theologian and he came from Australia and he caused great a rift within the Seventh-day Adventist Church concerning the investigative judgment. He even left it, he and another brother of his, another theologian, pastor, teacher, who believed that the investigative judgment is something that it was Ellen White who invest in 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 invented it along with the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and it cannot be substantiated by scriptures. So what I'm going to do for this study is that we're going to investigate the investigative judgment teaching or the doctrine as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And if it is indeed a reality, if it is true, if it can be backed by the scripture, or is it just a fiction, a figment of their imagination, some fanciful theory, and that they are using it to do the believers or they who are members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So let, let us go into the subject. Um, here is a picture which shows you um, apparently uh, a judgment scene of Daniel chapter 7 uh, verse 9 through to 13 where Daniel said he beheld until thrones were set into place and the ancients of days did sat thousand of thousand ministered unto him and the books were open and one like unto the son of man came unto him and dominion was given unto him and his dominion is an everlasting dominion you could read it we'll get to that now what is meant by investigative judgment uh the Sunday Adventist Church has taught and proclaimed the doctrine or the teaching of an investigative judgment contrary to this teaching are they of the evangelical movement or many other protestant denomination and the over 3,000 to 30,000 denominations who consider this teaching not only heretical, unscriptural, fanatical, but rather misleading and diabolical. Inadvertently, or advertently, uh, I must say rather, this study, inadvertently, this study is to 
unravel the truth behind the correctness or the fanciful error of this doctrine or teaching. I will advertently take an objective approach in dealing with the subject and present the truth as presented by the scripture. I'm not here to give you my opinion as to what the investigative judgment or try to back it and substantiate. I'm going to see if there are scriptures, um, biblical um, a foundation on which this teaching um, can be backed if it can stand the test of the scripture. Now, will it stand the test of scripture? The Bible says that we should prove all things. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And First Thessalonians chapter 5 21 says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Now, with such an important subject, one ought to be cautious or take caution by not giving room to speculation or opinions. We should let the Bible speak, and that is what I'm going to do in this study. Let us run on. For us to understand and for us to delve into this study before we delve, we have to understand first, have a clear understanding of important words that deal with this subject. In dealing with this subject, you would have known from my studies, from my Bible teaching, that I always uh, seek to let my listeners, my viewers, understand the meaning of words as is used and not leave things for them to speculate for them to hear me speak and not understand i try to bring it across so as to let even a child understand what i'm teaching that is what a good teacher would do now the word investigative come from the word investigate and investigative is the adjective and to investigate simply means to examine it means to study or inquire into systematically it means to search or examine into the particulars of, to examine in detail. And you'll find that at dictionary.com. Secondly, the word investigative, or the word investigate, rather, means a searching inquiry for ascertaining facts, or ascertaining facts, rather. It is detailed or careful examination and you'll find that at dictionary.com also thirdly the word investigate means to observe or study by close examination and systematic inquiry and that you'll find in the miriam webster's dictionary of 1828 and i hope we keep this in the forefront of our mind as we deal with the subject now what is a judgment a judgment according to the hebrew term used for judgment which is to judge is with the meaning of to punish to vindicate or obtain justice for a person and you will get that definition at help me with biblestudy.org a judgment also is a divine sentence or decision and we'll see that in the bible and find that in the bible now we need to understand that in dealing with judgment, there are three phases. We have the investigative phase. And in this phase, it is to learn the facts of the case. So when a case is presented to the court, um, it has to be investigated and to learn the facts of the case. Now, then you have, secondly, the judicial phase in which considering all the evidence a decision is made regarding the guilt or innocence of the one who is charged. Thirdly, you have the executive phase where the sentence is executed or carried out. In other words, a verdict is handed down for whether or not the person is guilty or not guilty. So 
So we need to bear all this in mind. So the question is, are there Bible, Bible verses um, that tell of Christ's investigative judgment or involved in an investigative judgment? Let us look at what Revelation chapter 2.23 states. It says, I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Notice that I've highlighted in red the part where Jesus in Revelation chapter 2 verse 23 states, I am he which searcheth the hearts and the reins. That's one passage of scripture which tells us that Jesus investigates an individual. That's what the Bible and the correct hermeneutics of the uh, portion of scripture here tells us that Jesus is searching the heart. So he is investigating our hearts and our minds. The life we live, whether we are pure, clean, what is it that is going on? Are we evil or are we good? Now, Genesis chapter 18 verse 2 is has to do with a different subject. It has to do with investigation too. I covered a study entitled God's Character Vindicated um, in Judging Sodom and Gomorrah. And it has to do with the investigative judgment of God's character being um, vindicated. Um, and I touched on the investigative judgment there wherein I dealt with the subject um, not centering around merely the homosexuality of Sodom and Gomorrah, but what I dealt from the perspective that God investigated Sodom and Gomorrah before he destroyed it. And Genesis 18 verse 21 is a key portion of scripture. It tells us that Jesus himself said, pre-incarnate when he came down to Abraham. And in Genesis 18, you saw that he had a meal. He and two other angels where Abraham um, killed a calf and prepared it. And Sarah made, made cakes and they had milk and butter. Abraham even washed their feet when he saw the three men and it was Jesus in his pre-incarnated state. Now it says, I will this is what Jesus said to Abraham, I will go down now, speaking of Sodom and Gomorrah, and see if they have done entirely according to his outcry, which has come to me, and if not I will know. Now one of the many arguments that you'll hear the evangelicals and people who are opposed to the teaching of the Seventh-day Adventist Church concerning the investigative judgment will bring about. And even from within, there are many Seventh-day Adventists who debunk or try to debunk and say they do not believe it and it is irrelevant. But I'm just here to be objective and to share with you from both sides of the fence and give you both arguments for and against it. Now, they say that God is all-knowing and Jesus already done his work on the cross. And there is no need for Jesus to investigate anyone further. Now, here in Genesis chapter 18 verse 21, one can simply ask the question, why is it that Jesus needed to go down to Sodom and Gomorrah? Right? Jesus is God. John 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was it God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh, okay. Verses 1 and 2. Now, if Jesus is God, there are certain attributes of God, which I can mention, is that He's omnipotent, He's omniscient, He's omnipresent. Everything that has to do with omni and is good. He's a God of mercy, love, and justice, and patience. Now, these are all attributes of God. Now, 
the key one that I would like to point out is that he's omniscient. He knows all things. He even knows it before it is done. So why is it that Jesus and the two angels are would need to go down to Sodom and Gomorrah and see if they have done entirely according to its outcry. Now, as you read the text, you say, as the cry which came up to him. Now, the question I have to ask you, and it might be, well, you're a preacher listening to me, and one who doesn't believe in the investigative judgment, or you might just be one who believes in the investigative judgment. Why is it that God, who is all-knowing, Jesus is God, and I bet we can agree on that, why would he need to go down to Sodom and Gomorrah to see if the people were wicked and they were abusing people? They were unmerciful and loving and kind and homosexual Sodomites turned the truth of God into a lie. Why? Why would God, in he knows he's in heaven, he sees everything, why he had to come down? And what we need to understand that even though Jesus went back to heaven and the two angels went down into Sodom and Gomorrah, God's two angels were his ambassadors and they were a representative, they were representative of God himself. So it was as he himself went down to Sodom and Gomorrah. So that's why he said, I will go down there. And remember that God is omnipotent, he's omnipresent. So it's not that God did not know that they wouldn't have listened to Lot. And even though Abraham um, stood in the gap for Sodom and Gomorrah and pleaded, for them, God knew that he wouldn't have found the amount of people, not even 10 people he found. Now, we need to take all these verses of scripture into consideration and see that many would say why there needs to be investigation. Isn't God all-knowing? Doesn't he know the end from the beginning? Yes, he knows. But God is a just God. He's a just God. And justice is the foundation of his throne. Now, let us look at Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 through to 13. It reads, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancients of days did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the forest flame, and his wheels as a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand, thousand ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, the books were opened. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words with the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Verse 13, I want us to pay keen attention to this here. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. I want us to underscore in verse 10 where it said the books were open. It's all here written on radio. Look at the screen. And verse 13 where it said, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. The picture of a book, tell your books are open in heaven and there needs to be an investigation. Now, what can we deduce from these portion of scriptures which I gave? Revelation chapter 2 verse 23. 
what we can deduce is that Jesus are discerned from it. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. It says Jesus is searching the reins and the hearts of men. There's an investigation that will go on and that is going on for the hearts of men. Or concerning the hearts of men. Are they for God or are they against God? They who profess to be walking with God, who have given their life to God and are a part of his church. Are they living up according to the standards and the rule of his government, his Ten Commandments? That's Revelation chapter 2.23. Now, secondly, what we can deduce from the scriptures that I've read, and especially Genesis 2 to 18.21, is that Jesus investigates the sins of men or the charges brought against a man, family, city, or nation before destroying it or handing down judgment or a sentence upon it because he's a just and merciful God. Thirdly, we can deduce from the scriptures that there are books with the deeds and works that we have done or that we will do which will be brought before the judge. That's God the Father. Fourthly, the reference to books is a strong indication of an investigative nature and not executive nature because books are being opened means that they are going to be going through the books and looking through the books to see what's in the book concerning individuals. Now, it tells us that thousands of thousands because in the Hebrew language and as I've studied some Hebrew, there's no such thing as a million there. If it's there, it must be now in the modern day that they have uh, added that to the language. But it is thousands times ten thousands and thousands of thousands, which this is telling you it's millions of witnesses. And those witnesses are not human witnesses because we see that thrones were set in place it's not on earth it's an heavenly scene what is happening it is happening in heaven john is seeing what is happening and taking place in heaven so no man should come to you and bamboos you and neither will i and tell you that it's going to happen at the end of days on the earth and it's going to be a great white throne judgment <coughs> that is impossible and contrary to scripture sixth we see that the judgment scene is in heaven as I've just mentioned the judgment takes place in heaven and from verse um, point 3 through to point 6 we realize all this we deduce from Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9 through to 13 now having looked at that and dealt with that let us um See, when does the investigative judgment takes place or begins? Now, one, we would see from Scripture, and I haven't um, placed it here on the screen, but you could, in your own time, you could read all these um, verses of Scripture. Some I can quote directly from my head. Um, the Bible tells us in Daniel that after the prophetic period of Daniel and Revelation, the time periods are very important in Daniel and Revelation. In the book of Daniel, time periods such as Daniel 7.25, Daniel 8.14, Daniel 9.24, um, Daniel 12 um, verses 11 and 13. And when we go to the book of Revelation, <coughs> We can look at chapter 9, verse 15, chapter 11, verse 3, chapter 12, verse 6, and these are the time prophecies. Now, the Bible also tells us that the angel of Revelation 10, verse 6 states that all these prophetic periods that have a full mention, they have been fulfilled. That's in Revelation chapter 10, verse 6, and I want you to pay keen attention. And follow me closely. Now, 
what we need to understand is that only the consummation of salvation is future and yet to be fulfilled. That's the only time prophecy um, that is yet to be fulfilled. Other than which speaks about there's going to be silence in heaven for an hour. And, and those um, time prophecy wherein it says that um, in one hour God is going to destroy um, the, the city Babylon. And that is for another study. But all these major time prophecies are prophetic periods. Um, they have been fulfilled. And Revelation chapter 10 and verse 6 states that emphatically, unapologetically, and unequivocally. So, let us see. Um, um, Daniel chapter 10 verse 7 will tell you that the only thing left for future is a salvation for Jesus to come and we be saved. And that would be the consummation of this whole um, plan of salvation, of redemption for sinful men with everything that is written in the Bible, all consummating in Jesus' coming and saving the people from sin and we receive immortality. Now, the Bible says, But in the days of the voice of the seven angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he has declared to his servants the prophet. That is verse 7 of Daniel chapter 10. So it tells you that in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. So when that angel in Revelation, <laughs> the seventh angel, sound his voice, the mystery of God should be finished, as is declared by his servants, the prophets. That's Bible. Now, as I've stated, I'm taking an objective approach. I'm just presenting the Bible as is. And if the Bible speaks, who am I to go against it or to denounce it? But you need to know what you're going to do with it. Uh, what will be the result of the investigative judgment? Now, according to the scripture, it has several purposes, the investigative judgment, all of which relate to the Day of Atonement. And notice that the Day of Atonement, um, for one to really understand it, one has to understand that I made a poor mention of the 2300 days prophecy in Daniel chapter 8, chapter 9. And we have to go into the Old Testament, um, the Levitical priesthood system of the earthly sanctuary, the tabernacle, and the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, when the high priest would take on the sins of the people and present it into the most holy place. Then that sin was transferred from the high priest to the sanctuary, and then from the sanctuary it was placed upon the goat, which was Azazel, who is a representation of the originator and instigator of sin, who is the devil. Now, Azazel's story, that's another subject by itself. I've done it, and I'll have to redo it and present it to you. Now, we need to understand, one, that the result of the investigative judgment is that this judgment vindicates God's people and reveals that they have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Undoubtedly, according to Revelation chapter 7 verse 14, and it says, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So, they who will be saved, and that great multitude which John saw, and Mount Zion, and who stood before um, God, um, he said, which were numberless, he couldn't number them, they were as the sand of the seashore. No, he said, they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 
So, they have been vindicated. Their sins have been washed away. They have been saved by Jesus and his righteousness. Now, they are the ones who will enter God's temple in heaven and serve him. According to Revelation chapter 7 and verse 15. Um, and the Bible tells us that the investigative judgment serves to vindicate God himself. We need to understand that God is on judgment. Um, the devil consider God to be unjust. The devil consider God that he is not a just God and that the laws which he has given us, his Ten Commandment, that nobody can keep them. And we saw that false, that Psalm chapter 40 verse 8, it is prophesied of Jesus. Um, before he came, he said, Then said I, Lord, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will. O oh my God, thy law is within my heart. And we saw that Jesus came. Uh, John 1, 14 says, The word became flesh and dwelt amongst men and revealed him as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, we saw that Jesus lived a pure life. The God-man. He did not have his divinity um, aiding him to live a life above sin. We saw that he prayed. He was obedient to the Father. He loved. He was merciful. We saw that he relied totally on the Father and lived a life of obedience. But he showed that man can indeed obey God's law and live a life above sin. So we see that God is on trial. It's not only um, humans who are on trial here, but we see that God himself and his, 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 his law, God's character needs to be vindicated uh, because he needs, we need to see him for the just God he is. When there was war in heaven, Revelation chapter 12, and Michael and his angel fought, and the devil was cast out. No, the angels did not understand uh, who God is, in, in the sense that the devil has brought charges against God, that he's unjust, that his laws are absurd, and if he was in charge, he would have done better. We see what happens here to his land, according to Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 18, 19. You could read it. You see that his land is wasted, and he has destroyed his captives, and destroys those who he considered to be his. Now, Revelation chapter 15 verse 4, as I said, the investigative judgment serves to vindicate God himself. The full impact of the cross is analyzed and God is found to be merciful, righteous and holy. Now, Revelation chapter 15 verse 4 says, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. So God's judgment, his righteousness, when he speak of his judgment, his principles that he um, that governs his, his, his kingdom, his government, the principles of his government, they are made manifest. And how they are made manifest? Revelation chapter um, 15 verse 3 says, And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Listen this part now. He said, Just and true are thy ways, thou King of sin. So, Every creature say both angels and well here is speaking about the redeemed. They are gonna sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. And what are they gonna say? Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou king of sin. So here we see that God is vindicated in the end. And that's why there needs to be an investigative judgment. So we see also that 
the dwellers of heaven praise God saying according to Revelation chapter 19 verses 1 and 2 hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God for true and righteous are his judgment here we come back again and see talking about his judgment that they are true that they are righteous and that when you speak of salvation we're speaking of saving man from their sin and glory and honor power unto the lord our god why because he is true he is righteous his judgments are also true and righteous because god is pure there's no variant in him finally we see that from the scripture that the investigative judgment leads to the cleansing of the universe. God's people will be removed from the earth at the second coming of Christ and taken to heaven. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 and chapter 14 verse 1. While their enemies are destroyed according to Revelation chapter 19 verses 1 and 2. No. Chapter 7, verse 9 of Revelation states, After this I build and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robe, and palms in their hands. So, here we see that this great multitude are they who have been resurrected and they who have been caught up according to first Thessalonians you know chapter 4 verse 16 through 18 and tells you that this is no joke thing and we need to investigate the investigative judgment and see whether or not it is fact or fiction now, Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, the Bible tells us that, After these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor, and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication. And has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. For those who are tuning in for the first time. When we speak of the whore we are speaking of Babylon. Um, the Roman church. That's what the Bible referred to as. The, with speaking of the papal institution. Papal Rome. And when he speaks of fornication here, he speaks of wickedness, just as fornication is contrary to living a pure life uh, in Christ, being a Christian. Um, so it is being, uh, it speaks of fornication, he's speaking of spiritual wickedness that is done um, by this institution. He says it corrupt the earth with her fornication, corrupt the earth with her wickedness. You know, and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. So God is going to avenge the blood of the servants that Rome has killed and the wickedness that Rome has done to his people, the many martyrs, the many people that it has killed and destroyed because of their belief in God. And they refuse to adhere to her vain traditions and teaching. Now, the Bible tells us, you ask, what's the purpose of the investigative judge? What happens there? It tells us that the true originator, Azazel, the instigator of sin is unveiled in all his evil before the entire universe and made responsible for sin. Now, when this happens, now we see that after the millennium comes, we have the executive phase of the judgment. What happens in the executive phase of the judgment? And we read in Revelation, we speak about the battle of Armageddon. When the wicked and the devil will seek to want to take over the new Jerusalem. And then God is going to judge them. 
and then after that he's going to bring fire upon them and brimstone and destroy them so satan and all the wicked ones who come to life at the end of the millennium meet before god and receive their just sentence and we see that in revelation chapter 20 verse says 11 and 12 and here in revelation chapter 20 11 and 12 the books are open once more and the record of their lies and works are analyzed then sin and sinners together with the originator and instigator of sin are all annihilated from the universe and that is what will happen now this is a picture of the wicked standing before god we see that the wicked will be destroyed and from what i have presented to you i have only touched the surface there is so much more when you take the subject to study to look there's so much about the prophecies about the sanctuary service and the reality is to those listening to this for you to understand the investigative judgment to appreciate it from my studies and what i've seen and what i've understood is that you have to understand the sanctuary service in the old testament you have to understand daniel prophecy of 2300 days you have to understand the 1260 days prophecy in revelation you have to understand daniel 725 you have to understand all these time prophecies you can't just hear something and dismiss it there needs to be an investigation um the court the law does not hear something and dismiss it they investigates it and there's a judicial phase and also an in uh, an executive phase where the sentence is handed down and a person is either rewarded or they are punished now i'm say this to you based on what i've presented you must be able to deduce from the scripture whether the investigative judgment is a fact or a fiction there are many who says that christ the work of salvation finished at the cross so all those who accept christ will automatically be saved just like that but the question is i'll have to ask you and this is an important and relevant question not all israel is israel the apostle paul wrote and jesus himself in the gospel says is not everyone who said lord lord will be saved now picture this and let us be real you have known me being a christian for decades you see me dress go to church fancy suits fancy clothes well spoken knowledgeable concerning the word of god and i present myself as one who is pious and one who is godly but behind closed doors you do not know what i'm practicing or what i'm doing i could be the most diabolical individual um, who exists on the earth if you were to read the book blood letters and bad men um, that's a book which gives you the 100 most dangerous crimes and criminals of all times in the united states in it you had i think it was one man he was one of the seven mafia families um in the united states i think he was marcioni his name is i you may need to check it out but he it is said in reading the book um and i look into it it's on my bookshelf um said that he loved church he was in church every sunday yet still he was a mafia he was head of one of the mafia family he was a mafia boss there were seven uh, mafia families that run the united states that were in the united states dealing with all their bootleg liquors um gangs killing drugs extortion racketeering you knew it but he was in church so being in church every sunday but what are your works the bible tells us in revelation that in revelation chapter 20 
um, that the books were open and the dead were judged according to their works. What? I have always a question when I was younger, when they speak of the judgment. Is God going to come to earth and everybody will be resurrected and stand before him and he has a record that he goes through it and says, okay, Steve, you are saved. John Mark, you are lost. And he goes through the record and it takes days and years for the billions and billions of people from the time of Adam straight down to the last person who will be born or alive and are saved or reject Christ when Jesus returns. That doesn't make sense. What makes sense is what Daniel chapter 7, 9 through to 13 said the books were open. John saw an courtroom where books were open. He said people were judged according to their works. The, and, and I must let you know that the investigative judgment is for the saints. It's not for the wicked. The judgment is in favor of the saints. So it's not the wicked down here who would be um, investigated. It is they who profess to be followers of Christ. Do they live up to the standard of God's government, which is are his Ten Commandments? That's what the investigative judgment is about in my studies of it. I didn't want to be too lengthy or go um, give you one, two hours presentation on it. But this is the basic that I go through, which is to help you to understand from an objective perspective um, what the Bible teaches. And as I said, you could go and check out um, Yahweh's character of vindic- in destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. It's entitled rather Yahweh and the homosexuals. Um, Yahweh's um, character vindicated um, in the investigative judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's it. Check it out. You yeah, will learn some stuff from it. And it will complement this study. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may you not be found wanting when your name shall be come up in the book before the courtroom in heaven you profess Christians now God bless you for those of you who want um, commented I would ask that you leave a comment I ask that you would subscribe for those who have not subscribed share these and let me know what do you think um, do you think that there is an investigative judgment um, do you think they, it's necessary for God to have an investigative judgment let me know what you think and may God bless you hit the notification bell so when I upload no beauty new videos you will be notified now have a good and godly day and stay safe until then ciao peace and love child of the king God bless